Good morning, everybody. It is Sunday. Uh, I think it's the 20th. Yeah, it's February 20th. Um, it's going to be about 40, 42 degrees out today, so we're uh, doing a little bit of detailing. Um, if you're following our Facebook uh, business page, you'd see that we did a few yesterday up in Amherst, but uh, I ran into a little problem. I'll uh, flip this uh, camera around here. I'll show you what my problem was. It's uh, kind of a stupid thing, but it was it was on me. But uh, here, I'll flip you around quick. So I brought this heater. Um, I took it out of the shed, and I went to Fleet Farm, put five gallons of kerosene in it. Uh, I went to the customer up in Amherst. Um, they both had garages, so I mean that was nice. It, it stayed about 40 degrees, 38 degrees inside the garages. But uh, yeah, I was hoping to get it up to about 70 degrees to do my normal good detail. I mean today's weather, 40 degrees, no wind. Um, it it doesn't matter. But uh, yesterday it was pretty windy and only 19 degrees out. But anyways, I brought this in. I was like, oh cool, we're gonna get this whole garage warmed up it's gonna be about 60 degrees turned it on nothing so I took the top off found that the fan wasn't spinning so I unseized the fan uh, put the top back on turned it on again fan started spinning it was acting like it was gonna fire up but then it didn't kept giving me an error one code but uh, so we took the top off again um, we checked the spark the spark plug um, spark plug was good. It was providing spark. I, uh, accidentally touched it as it was, uh, spinning down and shocked myself a little bit. So I know it had spark. Um, we pulled one of the fuel lines. Um, I put air down into the fuel line. Fuel came back up. So that wasn't the issue of, of sucking the fuel up. I took the air line out and, uh, blew through the air line. And that wasn't the issue. Um, what it came down to is since I left it in the shed and it got to negative 46 a uh, few weeks ago, the uh, kerosene gelled up inside of the jet. So what I'm going to have to do is there's a drain on the bottom. I'm going to have to drain all five gallons of kerosene out of this. Um, there was only about a half a gallon of kerosene in there when I uh, started, but... Uh, yeah, now I have to drain all five gallons out and take this top unit off and clean out the uh, gelled up kerosene, um, blow some air through everything, make sure it's clear, and then uh, try and fire it up again. So yeah, that was kind of a bummer yesterday, um, not being able to use that, but uh, we managed. We did a uh, Chevy Traverse at one location, and then uh, two minutes down the road we did a Chevy Malibu. So it wasn't horrible. Um, but like I said, that was my uh, screw up. I should have uh, had it inside in my basement, but I didn't. So this one and the other two that I have at the shop are going to need the same treatment because they were both in the same temperatures. So it's going to be fun tearing these apart. I mean, I've only used this about five times, so... And uh, I bought it last year. It was like five hundred dollars. So we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. But uh, in today's notes, um, here's what we're detailing. Uh, I already did the initial vacuum. Um, the customer got it as a hunting truck. I uh, he's one of our really good customers. We come here once or twice a year. But uh, as you can see, it's. Uh, it, well, that thing's going to be a pain, but I'll show you either way. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty stained up. Let me go around the other side and see if I can pop that down. It's real finicky. These uh, third-gen Dodges are super finicky with their uh, rear seats. But... As you can see, um, just like most Dodges, Chrysler products, Toyotas, and GMs, they have this impossible carpet. Um, if you're a, a detailer, a fellow detailer, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. 
<sighs> I'll get it down eventually, but there's a huge stain in there. Um, impossible carpet, pretty much what it is, is it's not like your regular carpet that's, you know, tied together real nice. Um, they have a nice pile on them. Um, these, it's just carpet pieces glued together, so it's, it collects everything, it keeps everything. Um, and even though I just vacuumed this, that's what stays up, um, you can see. But, uh, once I put the drill brush to it, put some chemicals on it, uh, it'll all loosen up, and, uh, once I take my extractor, it'll suck up all these little dirt fibers that are still stuck inside. So you can see there's quite a bit of staining. And this isn't horrible. I mean, there's some detailers that'll take six, seven, eight hours to do this, but I've been in business um, 15 years right now, so I have a pretty decent system down. Even with just me here, um, the guys are laid off until mid-April, so it's just me. I can knock this out in about two and a half, three hours, um, full detail with extraction, and it'll come out the same. But uh, yeah, here's the uh, starting product. Let me uh, fold this up, see some more of the staining. But uh, about two and a half hours, I'll uh, bring you guys back on the video and uh, show you the final results. So stay tuned. All right, guys, we're back. Here's how it uh, turned out. If you've seen it before, all the stains, uh, most of them are gone. steering wheel is really bad uh, we steamed that there's a lot of goo that came out All right, guys, that's uh, it for today. Um, glad to bring you along and show you our detail that we did. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe our, to our uh, channel and uh, share our content. Um, and enjoy this uh, nice weather while it lasts. Um, next week we're supposed to have a whole bunch of snow, so probably won't be detailing for another week or two at least. Um, but, uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. See you later. <laughs>